place in Turkey. I think we have a lot to discuss and it's great uh, to be here with you. Thank you for joining. And I'm absolutely thrilled uh, to discuss the uh, election results uh, here today. And uh, thank you a lot, Alp uh, Jenen, for joining us here. It's great to have you here. You're a university lecturer at Leiden University, working for the Institute of Area Studies. And we're really glad to have you here. We are online, but of course you are close to us here in the Netherlands. So close in heart, but also uh, geographically close. <laughs> Thank um, you for your Of course, uh, it's great to have you here. And um, yeah, you wrote also uh, various books and publications on the history of Turkey. You are an expert on uh, Turkey, on the political history, but also contemporary politics. And also great to note is that you uh, wrote a book on uh, 100 years of Republican Turkey, uh, history in 100 fragments, which is there, beautiful. Uh, together with Erik Jan Zürcher, uh, if I uh, pronounce correctly, I should because the German pronunciation should work for me. Mm. Um, and um, yeah, it's also available to uh, to buy on online via the Leiden University Bookshop, and uh, with the information also available in the thumbnail. We will add it later as well. But without further ado, um, it's good to start. Um, and I always forget to say, but um, for the audience here, thank you for joining again. And you're also, uh, of course, able to post questions in the chat in the Q&A. Uh, and uh, we will be sure to follow up upon them. So uh, I will be checking the Q&A as well, of course. So now let's dive in. Uh, Alp, uh, of course, last Sunday we followed the elections. Uh, we were, we have been, yeah, I've also checked it and it was quite an interesting result. So really happy to talk with you after the election result here. and. To really start off quite generally, what happened? Yes, uh, thank you, Emil, for the invitation, and thank you for everyone who uh, who logged in to, to watch this live, and also others who will uh, watch it later. Um, uh, so the the local elections on on March thirty uh, first, uh, so last Sunday, uh, uh, it was a watershed uh, uh, event. So this is and and uh, unexpectedly so. This is uh, so it's after the. Uh, the last year's general and presidential elections uh, uh, in May. Um, so the opposition was uh, very much uh, disappointed and also disheartened uh, because in that election, uh, the, the main oppositional candidate and the chairman of the oppositional party, uh, the People's Republican Party, CHP, uh, in its uh, abbreviation in Turkish, uh, Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu, he was the candidate uh, and he was backed by uh, a kind of an alliance of, of oppositional parties. And he faced uh, the the, uh, the president, uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Uh, and in that election, uh, uh, he lost in the second round. Uh, and also uh, the opposition lost also in the general elections in the for the parliament. Um, and this was actually in that time unexpected. Many of the polls have been suggesting that, uh, that the opposition should win. Uh, there was a great deal of uh, debate about the the, the candidates, uh, that whether it was right uh, that the, the chairman uh, uh, was was leading up, and there was, uh, and I think it proved to be also a wrong uh, decision afterwards. Now, uh, and also like many others have also seen it at that time. Um, uh, so the the oppositional uh, voters were very much. Uh, very much uh, disillusioned and disheartened by this uh, this uh, development. No, uh, many people were not really um, anxious about the local elections uh, this year, um, and this uh, this uh, let's say lack of enthusiasm was also the case among uh, the the ruling party of Justice and Development Party, the AKP. Uh, they have uh, they have been because. Erdogan had promised them that that he would fix the economy. This is the major issue in Turkey. Turkey is going through an economic crisis. He had promised to fix uh, fix the economy uh, and 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 really begged for for one last time to be elected as president last year. Um, but the economy uh, he could not save, and this was expectedly so. Um, and and there was also kind of re uh, yes resentment against uh, against this, and also against the party. And it's the, the AKP has become associated with uh, with corruption and so forth. And it was also revealed that that uh, that AKP and its leading personalities were very much involved in, in business trades with Israel during the the the, uh, the, the Gaza war, which which created also a lot of. Um, disappointment by uh, Muslim conservative and pious voters of AKP. So uh, not much enthusiasm was there. 
Uh, but uh, yes, so but nevertheless, of course, the 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 the, uh, the battle for the uh, for the municipalities uh, uh, became hot in the last weeks. Um, you have to consider Turkish um, in Turkey. The, the the local elections are important because, especially since 1980 coup d'état uh, and the advance of neoliberalism in Turkey, uh, where um, where if municipalities provides uh, social support and, and, and services. This is not perceived as coming from the state. This is perceived as coming from a party you voted for. So hence the, the presence and the identity of parties are way more stronger in the local uh, level. So and, and this experience for parties to have a good track record in local services, that they are trustworthy, that they bring services where the state, the ministries are not providing services. This can give uh, parties a very popular uh, profile. And this is also was the success story of AKP. Um, uh, and hence, this election was, uh, of course, uh, very important. And it builds up on the last uh, last uh, local elections from 2019, where uh, the uh, oppositional candidates who were backed up by then by a, a small coalition had won already Istanbul and Ankara and some other uh, cities uh, from AKP in 2019. So and it was the question whether the opposition will be able to, to hold on to these uh, these cities or win more uh, and how far a, uh, an AKP could win back these cities uh, despite the economic crisis. And then the result was actually a surprise for, I think, for every uh, Turkey observer and myself included. Uh, it, uh, the oppositional uh, party, which entered the election without an alliance, uh, became uh, became the strongest party, and it's uh, winning. Uh, I think so, thirty seven percent point seven seven or something uh, uh, of the overall votes. Uh, AKP on thirty five, becoming for the first time the second party in uh, second strongest party in uh, in Turkey. Um, so the the CHP, the oppositional party, was able to not only hold on to the the, the major cities it had won. Uh, but also in way more, and also in in parts of Turkey uh, where uh, where the CHP was never strong. So this is even like it hasn't been there for forty years, or even since uh, the entrance into multi party uh, politics in uh, nineteen fifty. So uh, therefore, it has been a very important uh, uh, important uh, result for Turkey. Yeah, yeah. So very, very special, uh, as you say, indeed. And also interesting is one of the questions I already had is how was the, how were these elections uh, observed before uh, the elections took place? For a lot of Turkey observers, but you say also it was a big surprise uh, for many. Yes. So it's uh, like I said, it's uh, many were surprised, and but it also confirmed uh, uh, from, confirmed. Uh, uh, let's say um, the the critique of the last campaign in uh, for the presidential and general campaign, uh, the, the 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 candidacy of of uh, Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu and how he engineered the kind of a, a pseudo alliance with with really uh, bo uh, post box parties that did not really have any any mobilization power. Uh, all this has kind of proved, and it proved also. Uh, the the popularity, especially the the, the rising star of this municipal uh, uh, um, uh, election since 2019 and this year again, is the mayor of Istanbul, uh, uh, Ekrem Imamoğlu, and he was one of the let's say most popular politicians. His name was very much uh, repeated during last year's presidential candidacy questions, and he was very popular on the polls. And he emerged, and he like, uh, and he had like I think more than eleven percent more than than AKP's candidate in Istanbul, hence winning uh, the votes of the Kurds, votes of also votes of people who uh, previously voted for AKP. Um, uh, and of uh, yeah, nationalists and 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 seculars and so forth. So, yeah, yeah, which is very big. Uh, the 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 differences in the in the many cities are very big as well between the uh, the uh, the uh, AK party and the uh, CHP, uh, which is very special as well. And think the uh, the biggest seven cities in in uh, Turkey are now in the hands of the CHP. I saw with also yes. very big differences, which is huge, which is huge. So a big surprise. Yes. So, and one important difference is also at the municipal parliaments, so the municipal assemblies. So, uh, in the twenty nineteen elections, for instance, in the case of uh, Ankara and Istanbul, 
uh, there uh, the 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 oppositional uh, mayors who won these positions uh, uh, so uh, they had not uh, uh, have the uh, they did not have the majority in the uh, municipal assemblies hence uh, many of the, their projects uh, were also blocked by the the, the municipal assembly uh, for lack of a majority now this changed uh, so now, uh, now they have the majorities in in most of the cities where also uh, Venor. So I think this this uh, uh, so this enables their hands. Uh, so um, yeah. What is the because I also saw um, this news of the municipal municipal uh, parliament also yeah the, that the majority is there. What is the power of this parliament precisely in the Turkish uh, political uh, composition? Um. So, um, so I mean, so many of the decisions. So the mayor cannot necessarily decide everything on its own. So many of the decision needs to go through these 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 uh, these municipal uh, municipal assemblies, uh, and they uh, and they are from from different districts and from different parties and so forth. So there is also kind of a, also a like a mini mini uh, mini parliamentary politics going on, and and this is important. And this is and in large cities, uh, this is of course the, these part uh, these. Uh, it can become very diverse and very large. Uh, and this was one of the ways in which AKP uh, and, uh, was able to, to block the success of, of the newly elected mayors in the last five years, because they could really kind of uh, uh, veto certain, certain, certain projects and so forth. So the other way how the AKP, in case that, uh, I don't know if you want to, uh, it's not necessarily part of the question, but we might need to go there. The other way how the AKP limited the the let's say the success potential success of the mayors in the last five years has been by uh, Erdogan's and it's and the new presidential system which is very much built uh, and uh, and customed around him uh, and his personality uh, has centralized many decisions and has taken away uh, some of the sovereignties of uh, of municipal governments. Uh, hence, uh, 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 the municipal governments had either no say in certain uh, decisions or had needed the, the signature of the ministers or even the president. And when uh, Ekrem Imamoglu uh, won Istanbul again uh, on, on Sunday uh, in his victory speech, He's, he he called on to President Erdogan to 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 finally sign those re and release those decisions so that he can continue building the subway. He can continue building on the other projects. So so this was a, a way of how uh, the central government could uh, could limit uh, the let's say the the, the 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 governance potential of the local uh, elected politicians. Yeah, yeah, and it uh, but it's interesting to note. Uh, uh, because it shows the weight of the local elections. Also, as you say, the importance of the local municipalities in terms of uh, of the trust and legitimacy of politics uh, in Turkey uh, generally. So I think that's, that's very important to note as well. And before um, may, maybe uh, um, we zoom out maybe on the uh, implications of this elections i would also like to uh, to zoom in a little bit also uh, perhaps just one note yeah, of course. Before, before we zoom in on, of course. on um uh, uh, one other aspect is of course the resources uh so uh, the, the municipalities uh, comes with resources especially large municipalities such, such as istanbul being the kind of having yeah. the one third of turkish economy this is certainly very uh, very important and now with all the municipalities that that the, the opposition has won uh, it it controls the, the let's say uh, i think it's like over 70% of the national economy is let's say in those cities uh, which they control and this is a this gives a possibility for the for the opposition to really invest in projects and invest and and create a profile on their own uh, and so this is important and previously AKP was able to build up its own, let's say, a kind of crony supporters through uh, through this this uh, through uh, allocating uh, resources from the municipalities. So the municipalities, uh, let's say, allocated uh, let's say uh, land like unoccupied state owned land to uh, to to let's say friendly companies, construction companies, and these built their construction projects and then so forth. Kind of a, a turn of money was there. They received uh, very uh, very uh, let's say uh, favorable credits from state-linked banks or let's say pro-regime banks, 
and then invested in such projects and so forth. So it, it created like a, a nepotism network, which benefited uh, the AKP and its support uh, supporters. Um, and 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 now with the election of the uh, of the opposition, this will certainly now cut down. So this is so AKP is losing also really material resources. Yeah, yeah. So that's also a big implication also towards the yeah the the medium term towards next elections that there is much more resources there are much more resources for yes. a chp to campaign as well and as you yes. say to build their profile um yeah but yeah so uh, indeed uh, very, very interesting and as i said maybe before zooming out on the implications generally on uh, on the trajectory of turkey's on, of the turkish democracy after uh yeah more than 20 years of uh, erdogan uh, erdogan rule Maybe good to zoom in also a little bit on these elections specifically and on some of the results and also the topics. You also already um, referred a little bit uh, on the importance of the economy being a subject of these elections. Uh, can you maybe elabor elaborate a bit more on what were really the most important subjects and uh, things that people considered when, when, when voting at these elections, you think? Yes. So um, economy certainly matters. And then... Um, but then the question is why didn't matter in last year's uh, last year's presidential and and general elections so in last year's presidential and general elections uh, uh economy certainly mattered P uh, people were concerned uh but here i think erdogan thanks to his charisma and his popularity and he's a popular uh, leader so and he is and he is a charismatic political leader uh, he uh, and it has a way of uh, of 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 uh, politi uh, communicating his messages uh with his supporter base and his supporter base also goes a little bit outside of, of his, his party as well uh, to, to other conservative nationalists and so forth. Um, and he was able to, 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 to give uh, the promise, the promise that uh, uh, so, so we will fix this. So this, um, um, uh, uh, so I'm not an expert on, on Turkish economy, but, but, uh, but Erdogan has, has, has taken control uh, on the economy in, in, in the last five or more years. Kind of has its own uh, own own economic ideas ba based on kind of uh, uh, that kind of an Islamic notion that there are no uh, no interest rates should be in support and but it's kind of well with built in conspiracy theories so and this has been really uh, driving the Turkish economy uh, uh, like into into a disaster um, um, and in addition to this so the whole investment of the economy has been into construction like I said. Uh, and this is also a very much a dead end investment. So this is the the returns you get. Yes, you get the, some of the rents and so forth. But it's a, uh, it's not like investing in, in industry. It's not, not even like in the, investing in, in agriculture and so forth, where you can like at the end of the year m might receive uh, the the the, uh, the producers. So um, so this was creating a problem. So and uh, what of course Erdogan is not talking about is. Uh, because of his uh, his authoritarian takeover of the country and the authoritarian remaking of the political structure with the with the transition of the, to the presidential system, uh, uh, the and the ju the judiciary being coming very much under his control and also uh, executive and and also has been also controlling the uh, the legislative. So he has been uh, he has made the Turkish uh, Turkish political climate very arbitrary. And this means that it's it's not trust it's not very uh, trustworthy environment for foreign invest, investors to to invest their money because they cannot trust on the judiciary they can they cannot uh, they don't know what might uh, might happen um, so um, this was one of the main problems so uh, so Erdogan backed the, the his elect uh, his um, uh, the, the the voters to back him up one more time. And meanwhile, what he did last year, and and this not so much now, uh, is uh, uh, is playing on the security card. So so Erdogan has been uh, has been securitizing uh, Turkish politics since uh, at least 2014-15, um, and he has been using this very much. So it has be, so and security matters a lot in Turkey uh, uh, in and so across the political spectrum. By the way. Uh, so and by using security issues and concerns and and uh, and especially the Kurdish question, um, this has uh, mobilized uh, a lot of the, uh, the let's say conservative nationalist uh, voters to to back him up uh, for the sake of the country and for the sake of security and and safety. This will work on a general and presidential elections. Um, this was uh, uh, not the case in in the local elections. 
Uh, now, also, of course, uh, question of candidacy, I said, so that the, uh, the, uh, it matters as well. Now, uh, the, the, the CHP had, after the loss of the election last year, there was a whole change of leadership at the CHP. So the, the chairman, Klish uh, uh was replaced by Özgür Özal, a younger generation of politician coming from the party. And the whole leading cadre, the old guards of the CHP, uh, have lost their positions. And they were very disgruntled about this. But it shows that uh, Özgür Özal's, uh, let's say, candidate picks for the the region, this was uh, this seems to be a success story, and there are not so much. So there are certain points where there were also bad decisions, but also did not pay as such. Hatay, the one, the earthquake region, for instance. Uh, but overall, the the candidates, uh, oppositional candidates, seem to have resonated with the local uh, local populations, and this has to do, of course, with with two. So just the, the of course the personality of the of these people, but they are, I think, now way more connected to the to the people. So they are not, let's say, appointed by Ankara or somewhere else. So they are people with local connections, uh, and this is important. I think that the opposition now shifted more towards the more of becoming a centralist uh, party, uh, uh, being originally a center left party, but it has an appeal to to, to also center right. Uh, secular uh, voters, uh, and it's uh, yes. So it, it 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 now it broke the kind of the cliche caricaturized image of the CHP uh, to a great deal, and appealing to and representing a kind of a more broader, uh, more diverse base. Uh, I think this uh, this certainly uh, helped. And on the contrary, an AKP's uh, candidacies were way more disputed. So they were way more centrally uh, uh, picked by Erdogan and and his and entourage, um, uh, and they did not necessarily resonate with the local uh, pop, uh, populations and so forth. And the the most uh, the clear examples of Ankara and Istanbul, where the the incumbent uh, uh, oppositional mayors really could like uh, have like eleven percent in in uh, in in Istanbul and I think it's nearly thirty percent more in Ankara so this is I think this shows that the candidates matter uh, as much and the discourse of this more diverse discourse of the opposition help in contrast to the securitized culture wars discourse of uh, of Erdogan uh, um yes so th- yeah. I think these are the uh, and yeah. economy as I uh, as I began with yeah, and that's also something that re- resonates also even better in local elections, as you also said. Uh, and maybe also to follow up on this, uh, is there also a general tiredness you feel regarding the uh, AK party uh, during these local elections, but maybe yeah, also coming up? Uh, yeah, I think so. I and mean, I see. So it's uh, so it's a tiredness you can say, but it's also I mean corruptness. Uh, 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 um, and it's uh, the part. I th- the, so, so the issue of the popularity of Erdogan is something else than the popularity of AKP. So yeah. So so now. Uh, so in 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 the recent ten years, this these the popularity of the two, the leader and the party, has really diverged from uh, from one another. People still vote for uh, have voted for uh, for AKP for the sake of Erdogan, uh, but. In such cases, such as the 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 uh, the local elections, economic crisis, uh, like bad candidates, then uh, the, the even their trust, let's say, trusted own voters could protest uh, the AKP. So this is, I think, certainly, and AKP. I don't think they have the tools to 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 reform. And I don't. There was also no signal of reform. We can also talk about some of the, let's say, the continued authoritarian measures after the elections. Uh, I don't think they can really reform the party to it to a, to a degree that it it becomes inclusive again, uh, that it can uh, uh, it can really generate like let's say hope uh, and energy uh, among the population. I don't think this is will. They will they will remove certainly certain people from the cabinet or from the party hierarchy. But I mean, it's like as long as as Erdogan is there, the, this this uh, I mean, this authoritarian tendencies will continue. Yeah. Uh, it yeah. will continue to make uh, make Turkish economy also uh, also um, uh, yeah uh, viable for 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 such um, yeah. not so viable for for investment. So yeah, and the structure of the party will uh, of course not change after all these years. It will remain uh, uh, similar, maybe to. Um, continue on one question on on the Q and A, which really closely uh, resembles what we discussed just yet, and then 
continue a little bit on also some results of other smaller parties, the smaller constituencies. Mm -hmm. And then I would like also indeed to zoom out a little bit and what this means for the for the short term future of Turkish politics and especially the news that Erdogan has also said he's not up for re-election, but we will uh, come back to that later. Um, definitely. Uh, one question from the chat from Casey King is, did the elections revolve around local issues mostly, or did national discussions play the biggest role? So I think we also discussed this shortly just yet, but maybe some comments still from your side uh, here as well. Um, yeah, very good question. So uh, I think there is a combination, especially in larger uh, larger municipalities and where they also, let's say, the candidates are more prominent personalities. I think there, the combination of more, let's say, uh, let's say national issues and, and such an issue such as the economy is, of course, also a national issue. So this is you cannot really. So it has it has a local reality and, and, and to a certain degree, a municipality can solve certain aspects of it. But of course, uh, the, 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 the cause of the problem comes from the national level. So um, this I think the uh, uh, the more national issues were more pro uh, prominent in in Ankara and Istanbul elections uh, here, uh, the uh, here Ekrem Imamoğlu in Istanbul, Mansur Yavaş in Ankara. Uh, they have become uh, like uh, prominent personalities throughout Turkey as they have been uh, also during the, the, the presidential uh, elections because they were have, they were appointed as uh, as a vice president uh, of the of the of of of, of Kılıçdaroğlu in the in his campaign so they were re already very prominent in campaigning nationwide last year so they are very uh, very popular um uh, so uh, but you cannot escape the local issue. So this is, I think, this is, I think, very important that uh, that uh, that you go shop by shop, uh, business to business, and 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 there you you cannot escape talking about the local problems. So, uh, and and this is also something which AKP uh, also, of course, has to do as well and has done. Uh, and in the case of the, for instance, in Istanbul case, uh, Murat Kurum, the candidate for Istanbul by AKP very low profile bureaucrat uh, former minister he was really uh, like after realizing that he was not really um, a good match for for uh, imamoğlu the whole cabinet was going shop by shop you know the foreign minister going to shops and saying vote for uh, murat kurum and it's and this also infantilized uh, him uh, but but it shows that this how this national national and the local levels are entangled also in case of the the, the governing akp uh, but you cannot escape addressing the local issues, and I think those that the fact that they uh, the, the the opposition has won also in the smaller municipalities shows that this is this uh, that they uh, they certainly had a had a um, uh, had a promise that resonated with the uh, with the voters to some degree. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's an interesting combination of various things coming together, which is of course always <laughs> always the case, but. Here it really, yeah, that really explains the upset, which wasn't uh, expected by many. Uh, maybe to zoom in also a little bit on on other parties, because of course in the alliance last year, uh, CHP was in an alliance with some other parties, which, as you said, didn't work uh, that well. How did these parties perform in elections? So we, for example, have the uh, EE party, if I pronounce uh, yeah. correctly, uh, but also the Kurdish party. Maybe, yeah, what are your uh, uh, reflections on that? Yes. Uh, so, uh, uh, so the the uh, so the uh, so the last so perhaps we need to go back to 2019 elections to understand the why we have these alliances. So, uh, and it's not necessarily a coalition; it's an alliance. So, in 2019 uh, e elections, uh, uh, the 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 CHP has partnered up uh, with the the by then recently founded E Party. So, the E Party, the Good Party, if you translate it. Uh, the Good Party was a was an offshoot uh, splinter party from the National Nationalist Movement Party, which uh, which became an an ally of of uh, of Erdogan in in 2015, if I'm not mistaken, uh, or 2016 around that time, um, and 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 some of its members opposed this 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 alliance with AKP, and they splintered and built up the E party, and 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 in an attempt they they also wanted to move a little bit out from this uh, the the far right uh, tradition of the nationalist uh, movement party, and or move way more uh, more into the into the empty center right because the center right uh, there was a vacuum after 
the authoritarian turn of the AKP. So this there was a vacuum to be uh, needed to be filled. Um, and here uh, in 2019 elections, uh, CHP representing center left had partnered with the center right representing, but also with elements from the far right, E party, uh, uh, and they were unofficially backed up uh, by the Kurdish HDP. By the uh, by, then uh, its, its name changed this to this in, in this elections now. Them, uh, the HDP not being part of the alliance. Uh, has backed the candidates of of uh, in in certain cities, especially uh, so, and and most prominent them being I mean Istanbul and so. Um, hence, this was a success story in two thousand nineteen. So, what happened uh, with the alliances uh, in last year's election was because Kılıçdaroğlu insisted on being the candidate himself, and the, and the leadership of the E Party, Meral Akşener, was. Uh, opposed to this, and she uh, she rather uh, preferred the, the one of the mayors of Ankara and Istanbul. Uh, Kılıçdaroğlu brought in some some really minuscule uh, parties, uh, fr- allegedly from uh, from from uh, center right. Some of them even former AKP splinter parties, uh, uh, including former ministers of uh, AKP. Very problematic. Uh, 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 and 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 in this coalition, this coalition was kind of a. Yeah, it was an awkward constellation, and it did not work. So the coalition, pol- the alliance politics, sorry, alliances were broken up, and many of the parties have said, "No, we want to prove ourselves in the in the uh, in the local elections." So and this was also what E Party done. So enough, uh, we will do it on our own. Uh, but in this course of this cr- uh, candidacy issue, E Party had already suffered uh, uh, its vote, and it had also it was hesitant to tackle. Some of its potential voters from uh, uh, nationalist voters who are, let's say, very much concerned about the migration issue. They were very reluctant to address this. This gave result to it created a splinter party of its own, the Zafar Party, the um, the Victory Party, which is a far right anti-migration party. And they received quite an attention uh, already. Um, uh, Hence, uh, they E-Party entered the election so kind of in a Either we win, we win, and we win for us. And if we lose, it it will it will harm the opposition as such. And it uh, and the elect uh, the voters said no, so they weren't interested in such a such a such a party political gamble, and they were way more concerned about the larger issues. And they voted uh, for CHP, so they uh, so they, they lost considerable votes. Uh, um, the in the case of a, a HDP, which of course goes through and judicial uh, processes, and, and and I will mention also the recent one from today, uh, had changed name to Dem Party. They also said no. This time we are not backing any candidate from another party. We will also uh, 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 run for under our name, um, and this worked. Uh, uh, Semi good in the case of uh, so E party lost half of its votes. So uh, and in the case of of the the pro Kurdish uh, Dem party, they ma- they managed to regain their votes. And, and I think uh, in the eastern parts of Turkey, in the in the in the Kurdish uh, regions of Turkey, they were very successful. But they were not successful in western parts of Turkey, where Kurdish voters actually voted for the CHP candidates. So so um, this was I think the kind of the the, the shifts. The questions about the other far right parties, for instance, the Zafar Party, I talked about the Victory Party, uh, which was very, which very, so uh, has received so much attention in media, and uh, uh, they have uh, uh, so I think I have to look up it's the one point seven four percent of the votes, so it's it's minuscule. So they failed to to show up. I mean, it's of course still not nothing. It's nearly two percent. Uh, but uh, but this was also mostly a result that they did not really have a proper organization. It's a very much a leader party uh, around uh, Umit Özdağ, their their leader. And uh, but this doesn't mean you should not think, oh, the far right politics is gone in Turkey, so and it's now over and so forth. No, I think we sh- we still need to be cautious about this, and they uh, they might uh, be, uh, get larger in the national and general general elections where security and so forth and other issues and migration issue will play a major role. Um, uh, and then there was another spl- uh, another let's say fringe party emerged in the recent years, uh, and this is the the Yenidan Refah Party. I think New Welfare Party is the official English translation, um, or at least the most common one. Um, 
And here, the new Refah party, a new um, welfare party, is actually the re reincarnation of the former party of uh, of Erdogan. It's the former Islamist party uh, where Erdogan grew up. Was uh, their 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 youth party leader, their their uh, their municipal mayor for Istanbul uh, in the 1990s, and so forth. So, uh, and the son of the former leader of this party, Erbakan, his son Fatih Erbakan kind of refounded re this party uh, and they represent a kind of a more conservative, more fundamentalist Islamism uh, and they are critical of AKP in many issues. So it's so, so Fatih Arbakan, I think he has also a personal vendetta against uh, 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 the uh, AKP and Erdogan and uh, uh, um, and also, they are also very much. They were very much critical about, the, let's say, the, the 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 Israel business deals of AKP leaders. So they have really, uh, they 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 made a great uh, 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 deal about this. Uh, and they have been also very much criticizing corruption and and nepotism and chronic capitalism of the AKP. So and they become uh, the sixth party. So they they got like I think so six percent of the uh, of the overall votes. And this is, I think, also something that needs to be kind of also something we need to be concerned about. So this is that there is an also a growing Islamist uh, alternative to, to AKP. Yeah. Yeah. And especially with the prospect of AKP yeah, becoming possibly more unstable, you will also see these parties probably gaining also more 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 votes uh, in the future. Maybe to follow up uh, on the points you made on the, uh, the Kurdish uh, party, uh, Dem, former HDP. Uh, because they won in some electorates, such as in the uh, in the east of the country, uh, such as Van. But today, um, yeah, there were various f things happened and which are still ongoing, right? Yes. So, um, uh, so, so, just to give you a perspective, so, um, so, so, it has been now. I mean, the the, the pro Kurdish party is winning. The, the municipalities in the east has now has a has a history in Turkey. Despite the longer history of 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 repression of of, of pro Kurdish parties, um, and now, uh, however, uh, uh, so I'm I'm uh, uh, so I, in the last uh, in the last decades, AKP has and especially after uh, with the uh, uh, 2016, uh, AKP has started to to uh, to uh, to remove elected mayors for some judicial reasons so that they are supporting terrorism that they are and so forth so um and and then placing uh, placing um uh, appointee state appointees as if let's say uh, let's say uh, like a business being going bankrupt and then there's an appointee there to 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 govern it in the name of the the public good so uh, so these uh, municipalities have been ruled by by state appointees, and they were, of course, pro AKP as such. So, um, and this was a way, uh, and hence the, the the sovereignty, the votes of these people were robbed, robbed in the last uh, last uh, last year. So this has a, has a, has happened uh, repeatedly, and uh, and 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 now uh, facing this this year's election. Uh, whether this would happen again, and of, uh, and and here there were of course uh, there were rumors that the uh, that Dem Party, certain factions at least within the Dem Party, were in secret negotiations with AKP, uh, so that they don't uh, back up the the CHP's oppositional candidates uh, and in return receive a kind of don't receive these appointees Kayum in Turkish. Uh, uh, so, but, but I, so, so we, I mean, we know that such negotiations existed, but, uh, we also know that it didn't, uh, go anywhere. Uh, and it's, I think, and also certain factions within the Dem party were also against this. Um, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and of course, as, as much as people were very happy about the elections and proud that, that the Dem party was uh, able to like be, come out so strong in this region, uh, well, like the the first, let's say, the funny feeling after the election victory was, uh, will it happen again? Will uh, will uh, again new Kayums be appointed by the state? Uh, and this um, this early this morning, it was uh, then uh, revealed that for one and one is again one of the and and one uh, it has uh, it has fourteen uh, districts and all fourteen districts were won by them party. So they are like fully. And its elected uh, mayor had won over fifty-five percent, 
and uh, and and the AKP's candidate was second, and it's uh, so uh, so the Abdullah Zaidan was the uh, Dem Party's candidate, uh, fifty-five point uh, uh, for for eight, and uh, Abd uh, Abdullah uh, Awas uh, receiving twenty-seven percent. So quite a difference. So, so uh, uh, and it was revealed that uh, that Zaidan's uh, permission to be elected uh, that this was revoked on Friday evening. In a last minute, just be five minutes before a closure of the of the of the uh, of the court, it was it was revoked that he because of a past crime or anything, and he was cleared for for election by the same electoral board in one, and then but shortly before the elections, they 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 revoked him. This was revealed this uh, morning, uh, and uh, and then uh, the electoral uh, uh, Turkey's electoral board uh, board since he was he did not had the right to be. Uh, to be a candidate in the first place, uh, according to them, they gave the uh, the uh, they gave the um, the second uh, uh, candidate, AKP's candidate, happens to be no coincidence, of course, uh, with seven uh, twenty seven percent uh, that he that he should be the mayor. Now people are on on street in one, uh, and 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 certainly also other parts of Turkey, and not only in Kurdish uh, Kurdish uh, regions. So this is a major issue, and I think uh, and and uh, the CHP leader Özgür Özel has already uh, protested this, and I think this is very important that uh, that also other oppositional parties back this up, uh, uh, and this is that this should not be kind of uh, isolated as an oh, this is a this is an issue of Kurdish question. Uh, uh, so we are in the rest of Turkey. Uh, I think this is, this would be a major mistake to do. Uh, because this is something that is this is an extra legal intervention into into people's uh, sovereign uh, votes. Um, yes. So, and I think, but we have to observe what will happen. Uh, um, yes. So, but this is of course yes. This is this is very bitter. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah, and ongoing at the moment, as you said. Uh, but indeed, as you say, very wor worrying, and uh, also shows the the pressure on on democracy uh, and democratic standards. That's also under the. Uh, AK Party rule, which has developed and is ha has developed over a longer term, with uh, Kurdish parties such as the HDP Dem Party being under pressure on several instances, also indeed with some ju judicial uh, interventions as well. Uh, so definitely good to yes. Uh, so the, the issue of democracy in Turkey is of course a, di a disputed issue. So uh, so so Turkey has has uh, has regular elections. Uh, and and there is a high turnover for these elections. This uh, this, this time it was low with seventy eight, so uh, so it's uh, but it's a, quite a high number nevertheless still. And normally it's over like it's like eighty five or something like. Uh, so it's a very high people uh, people love to vote in Turkey. Uh, and there's 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 a uh, so and, uh, and many of the elect uh, parties running they their discourse their ambitions people who are going to 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 be uh, the observers of the ballot boxes there is a spirit of democracy and there are democratic forces but there are also undemocratic forces in Turkey and this is an undemocratic structures in Turkish pol uh, political uh, uh, landscape. Uh, and this makes it, uh, and 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 this means that the, the elections are not free or fair. So this is so. Uh, uh, so the government has ha dominates uh, uh, dominates the the elections, and uh, and this has become uh, become a major issue uh, in the uh, at least uh, let's say uh, 2010, uh, if not slightly earlier, um, that the AKP, the the whole state uh, television radio. Are dominated by AKP, so they are like the, the 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 lines between the party and the state and the government are very much blurred, uh, uh, and uh, and we had in the past years not in this election, but uh, we had also issues of even though at a minor scale election fraud. So this has been there was this was an issue of uh, stolen elections, but let's say uh, even if the numbers are small. The, the kind of the intentions and the uh, the the uh, the let's say attempts were there, uh, not so much in this election. It was not as much reported as such, uh, but it shows that it, uh, like the, the, it's it is competitive for the the uh, the the op uh, oppositionals. So they have to compete, but they are competing in an unfair environment against a uh, behemoth of a, of a party state uh, that can uh, that can dominate that controls over judiciary and the electoral boards and support uh, and and even take away and steal your votes after the election in such cases so
Yeah, yeah. But as you also say, um, uh, firstly, that also the these elections, but also wider the enthusiasm and the turnout during elections also shows the, the vibrancy of Turkish democracy as well. And people being so uh, so so thrilled to to go out of uh, vote, and also the variety of parties that uh, that are uh, are competing. Uh, maybe to continue um, on something you noted as well, because we have a couple of questions in the chat, and I see time is going very quickly um, uh, with a lot of interesting things to discuss. Um, maybe to follow up onto the question of uh, Timon, and then I will go back to the other questions of peace. Uh, in the chat, but uh, Timon's question also links up nicely with what we discussed just yet as well. Uh, and also good to note is that a uh, thank you, you got a thank you from Casey King as well as a reaction to the last uh, question. Um, the question of Timon Driesen is, can you reflect on the role of the media during the campaign regarding the AKP domination of it? So you very shortly um, uh, refer yeah, to it so, as well. Yeah. Uh, so, so the so the um, so uh, this uh, I I partly said this. So the AKP uh, uh, AKP uh, uh, controls now that the state media is is no more kind of um, is no more let's say uh, objective. And this used to be very long in Turkish history. If you I remember from my own uh, childhoods and and it was like my my teenager years and and so forth. So that the the state's television was somewhat boring, but it was, but it was still kind of had this aim of being, uh, let's say, at least during elections to, to give enough uh, equal time to all parties and so forth. So, so this has changed. So this is now the state media, uh, the, the, the TRT has become more or less uh, kind of an AKP's party uh, mouthpiece, uh, but also the Anadolu Agence, the, the state affiliated news agency, is very much affiliated again. So they have been very much uh, part of AKP's political discourse. And this was also no exception in this election. So now beyond this, what AKP has achieved in the last 10 to 15 years is um, they got also uh, developed a near monopoly over other media concerns. And I'm talking about, let's say, the old media, like televisions and so forth. So that's and newspapers. So uh, and here, uh, AKP did this uh, because they were complaining that all media is like, against us. And they are all, let's say, the Kamalists and the military and so forth. So, so what they have done uh, is uh, with with some tax schemes, uh, pressuring the large um, large uh, holdings and concerns who also had, let's say, media corporations, uh, cornering them with some some tax issues, uh, forcing them to sell their 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 media branches. And then meanwhile, they had already built up their own uh, own affiliated holdings, mostly through the construction schemes that they have uh, provided these companies. So they build up an, their own economic, uh, let's say, uh, uh, affiliates. And these construction companies have bought up uh, the, the, the media concerns. So, so also the private media uh, is for now for a long time uh, under the control of uh, AKP, and it's, if you look into major events, so that you see they have this. Uh, sometimes they have this very funny. They have the same uh, same uh, heading, uh, like like uh, uh, so. They are very like very much coordinated in, many, in most of these issues. Um, one aspect I think that changed in the recent years is that uh, there's in Turkey uh, use of of social media is very important. So this is so. Uh, 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 so Twitter, especially among let's, among urban population for uh, political observation, that is something that is very strong. Facebook as well for local elections. Facebook was very important, um, uh, but very important is now also YouTube where, where we are, yeah. uh, uh, and that this is that uh, this also enabled the kind of that the, the, the centralization of news making, news coverage. And the, the kind of democratization of 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 uh, of, of uh, broadcasting through YouTube, uh, this enabled kind of alternative channels, uh, um, and uh, one can discuss how much influence they have. Of course, so this is okay, you can say this is still an elite phenomenon. This is still certain circles. Certainly, I think in in quantitative terms, one can argue this, but I do think that they have also a, 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 a kind of. Um, uh, an impact, uh, and I think this is the difference. And in I think in the last couple of years, the opposition uh, there are now also a couple of uh, pro opposition uh, news channels, uh, which are also very popular. Uh, so I think this is this is also a recent development. Uh, yeah. So uh, so it is still dominated. To answer the question uh, of Timon, this is it is still dominated by the state, especially the the, the old media. 
uh, but uh, but uh, social media is way more diverse, and there is a kind of a, a return of the of oppositional uh, voices also within the old media. Yeah, that's very interesting, and also something yeah we can discuss again for a long time as well. But we, we, uh, with time being so short, but also very interesting to hear about YouTube being one of the channels uh, that a lot of content creators find alternative channels and 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 be able to yeah to find a, a, quite a big public. So I think. That's a very interesting development as well uh, to know there. Uh, maybe uh, to continue on some question in the Q&A as well, also a direction I would, uh, wanted to go to for the for the final bit of our uh, webinar uh, is looking ahead, looking ahead to 2028, of course, when there are the new presidential elections, but maybe also, yeah, and of course, the years uh, in between. And the question of peace really um, um, referred well to that as well. Uh, Two, um, in which the question is, uh, the opposition uh, had a hard time really coming together last year. Will, will Imamoglu be an undisputed candidate next time? Mm -hmm. What What are your uh, thoughts about that? Or maybe other candidates uh, mm -hmm. are also, uh, because you also um, uh, refer to the, the, the new, uh, the mayor of Ankara being a very popular person as well. Yes. So uh, now I think uh, I think uh, so. Now the two mayors of Istanbul and Ankara they indeed demonstrated to be uh, uh, viable uh, candidates on a national level. So uh, and they have uh, uh, and they have been uh, they have been already called by the EU party to be to be uh, to be candidates on their own in the last uh, procedure, but they remain loyal to the party line, uh, and I think they uh, so uh, and and um. um and this paid off for them at least now in the in the in the with the with the local elections. One can easily argue, however, if let's say Imam Ole had been the the candidate last year in the in the presidential election, uh, I think he had a very good chance of winning. So this is, I think, this is one of these bitter realizations uh, uh, for some colleagues, at least uh, finally, that this is uh, this has been the case. Um, now, uh, in regards to uh, Mansur Yavash. Who is the mayor of Ankara? He comes from this more, uh, more let's say the let's say the conservative nationalist uh, tr uh, uh, tradition, and he is very popular among, uh, especially in, within let's say interior Anatolia, uh, where uh, conservative nationalist voters are are the majority. He is very popular there, and in Ankara, he uh, like I don't remember the number, but it's nearly thirty percent more than the neck uh, the, the the other candidates. So. Uh, so, uh, but uh, his appeal. Um, so he is he's a strong candidate, uh, but uh, uh, he and he has also received Kurdish votes in Ankara. I do think that this is also the case, uh, but uh, but he is not so much uh, let's say a strong face that could incorporate a, like a nationwide uh, politi uh, politics that could really also strongly incorporate the Kurdish vote uh, uh, as much as Imamoğlu has done, uh, I think, uh, or can. I think this is the major difference. So what Imamoğlu can do is that he has he has a very good uh, rapport with, with, with conservatives. He has also a very good rapport with Kurds. Uh, so I think this works quite well that he can, uh, like, uh, he's like he's talking with, with conservative pious people uh, or uh, he has he has also made very public uh, statements, very uh, very open about the Kurdish question. Learning Kurdish, uh, uh, like basic Kurdish, should be. I, he said, like every Turk needs a little bit of this in uh, small talk Kurdish. He had a he had a party election song in Kurdish. So I think in that regard, he has he has uh, more more potential. So, um, and one might even argue also in terms of their international uh, international appeal. Uh, I think this is also stronger in the case of uh, Imam Olu that he has uh, his his English uh, Twitter uh, account as well as his, uh, his his let's say his connections with other municipalities abroad. Uh, this is I think stronger than than uh, than Mansur Yavash who comes from a more let's say smaller tradition of municipal uh, tradition. So he is I think stronger on the ground as such, and 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 also having an appeal to 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 uh, to. Uh, to to electors in that way, but I don't think this is this this will lead up to a kind of a clash. But okay. I don't necessarily think that. I think I think they can still find they also, as so far they get along quite well. So they might still uh, have find a solution of like who is uh, who is uh, minister of interior, who is the who is the president, or I don't know. So so those kinds of possibilities are are, are still there. But I think Imam Old is certainly uh, or they too are way more stronger than. 
Özgür Özel, the, the chairman of the party. Uh, he has, I think he made, I think he good image for himself in this election by his ma personnel management in the candidacy questions and in the organization of the uh, the election observation. Uh, and also his messages were very good after the election. So, uh, but I don't see him uh, ra uh, racing uh, racing for, for a candidate yet. So, but it might change. So, of course, the big question is, uh, what about Erdogan? Uh, should I continue with that? So, yeah, I think you are also uh, uh, well well um, following up on the on the on the question in the chat because we have a question as well from uh, ah. Hank one two three. And he um, uh, asks, how do you think the uh, AK party will respond to these results and try to secure support for the 2028 presidential elections? Yes. Uh, so so, uh, so one of the things is, of course, everybody was concerned about what, uh, what Erdogan uh, uh, would say after the, after the election. So it was a devastating loss. Uh, and it's uh, Erdogan is famous for his, his Balkan speeches after all elections, and he's always kind of full of pride and also kind of uh, uh, and is like it's part of his his allure. And and, and Erdogan is is also as much as a populist leader he is, he likes elections, and what he likes more is winning elections. So, uh, um, but everybody is concerned how he would deal with it because Erdogan also likes conspiracy theories and and also kind of this this security uh, security discourse. Uh, but he was very, 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 let's say, uh, very, uh, very, uh, quotation mark, modest and also kind of uh, conciliar. He said, so uh, this is, he said, I think uh, if I'm quoting him right, uh, this is not an end, but this will be a turning point. He said yeah. he accepted uh, uh, defeat. He said, this is like uh, we have to take lessons and so forth. So very like uh, self-reflective. So. Yes, but so this is, of course, we were re revealed, everybody was revealed to, to hear this news because like one fear, I mean, even in, even in more developed democracies, like we have seen with Trump, that that, uh, uh, that losers not accepting the, the, the results and calling for an uprising. So, I mean, this is, we have, I mean, we are seeing such, such, such examples. And in that case, of course, this is, this is good. Uh, but the developments today in one uh, shows actually that this is uh, not necessarily the case. He might now, I don't know what he would do. I mean, if he uh, if he is a little bit strategic, so he would intervene and 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 stop this decision and reinstate the 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 uh, the, the the Dem Party to kind of show his goodwill. I don't know he would do it. I doubt, but that would that would be the smart thing to do. Uh, but what he will certainly do is using the central government's power to limit the municipal government's, uh, let's say, autonomy. This he will continue certainly do because this is invisible. Because then if you complain about this, you're a whiny. So you're just whining around. So it's, it doesn't sell to the electors. Oh, we wanted to all these projects, but we couldn't because of central government. Nobody wants to hear this. So this is a strong leverage he has uh, still his hands on and he, he will pull it strongly. Uh, the question, uh, uh, yes, uh, so he cannot be practically elected and even his uh, candidacy in the last election was kind of disputed. Uh, uh, so what the question is whether he would go for early elections, because if it's early elections, then he can uh, once again uh, 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 ca uh, be a candidate. Uh, but he said that he's not interested in early elections now, and I can understand him because the the economy is still bad. So this is if he got out of this and immediately, I want early elections, he, which he has done previously in other cases where he had some setbacks and called for early elections to renew it. But uh, but this is not the situation now. So this is, I think, so. And this is also not the situation for the CHP as well. And Özgür Özel, uh, the chairman, has also also said that they are not interested in 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 early elections because the the, the votes they received are borrowed votes. He said so. This is they 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 receive the credit from the voters. So they uh, and they cannot really uh, gamble on it on on a, on a, on a, on a early elections now. Uh, but uh, but I can imagine that let's say not in 2028 but 2027, 2020, late 2026, uh, that Erdogan engineers a, a kind of a security issue, something uh, let's say a crisis, which calls for like kind of a like a national mandate uh, and call for early elections. I think this might be there, or even 
uh, other possibility would be a, a referendum on the on the constitution mm. to allow him to, to be candidate again or rechange it again so which would again go back to an election cycle but i think he would uh, he would play with such ideas more in the later uh later half of of his um uh, of his term yeah yeah so various possibilities and always he it's so it might also be possible that he, he will use the time to set up one of the other candidates of the ak uh, ak party if he doesn't want to continue yeah but this is, but nobody knows what who, no, uh, like no, who, who would be no. <laughs> yeah so this is one of the issues i think this is a major problem of of a of a very personalistic yeah. authoritarian uh regime a party regime uh, which very much centers around around uh, around the persona of the the president and chairman uh, at the same time uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan and there's such a personality leader cult uh, about him uh, uh, so and uh, this is uh, uh, so he uh, like any reasonable uh, let's say potential candidate kind of fails to 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 yeah, either yeah. either Erdogan stop them or uh, or. Let's say uh, their rivals uh, put stones on their on, on their path. So this is not easy. Uh, so uh, so and there is no strong um, potential candidate yet. Uh, so um, and I doubt that he can really. I don't think he's the type for this uh, to to build up such a such a uh, such a uh, um, successor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's something that resembles also a lot uh, other uh, populist um, personalistic parties uh, throughout the world in Europe. Uh, that yeah, they are not able to to attract new talent or new new de developments in the party, and it's really interesting to see CHP. They are able to do it with the various young leaders uh, throughout the country now uh, rising up and and doing well. Um, I see we have come to five o'clock, but I still want to ask you one more question before we close off because it's one uh, thing I would like would have wanted to ask you uh, uh, still, and it's a quite a big question, <laughs> um, but. Yeah, do you feel because, of course, you're also very much uh, scholared into the political history of Turkey, and you also saw that there have been other local elections, such as in 1989, which are also a very interesting result, which also seemed like a watershed moment for Turkish democracy. Do you feel that this 2024 local elections really also uh, the beginning of a new phase uh, for Turkish democracy? Uh, really. Um, yeah, moment of change. Of course, it's difficult to say it at the moment. But well, what are your feelings about that? Um, very good question. And I, I, yeah, I, whether it's a change is, I think it's it's we will see. This is so, but it's uh, I think uh, so. Uh, uh, the issue with with AKP is that it's uh, it's all it cannot. It's it's hard for AKP and its colleagues working on this more. Let's say more ex expertly than I am. I have argued this it's 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 difficult for a party to become more authoritarian without having natural resources so this is so this is an issue which akp is facing uh so it it's it has tendencies to 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 become more authoritarian uh but to do this you need resources so there is a dilemma in in akp and it wants to solve its problems but it cannot solve its problems with the, its current leadership with its current party cadres and so forth so uh, um so uh, to, to um, um, uh, so whether this is an uh, this is the, the changing moment the beginning of the end or something I would be more careful I think I think we have to look into this more in a face I think uh, I think uh, the 2019 municipal elections were were already a signal I think that was also very quite revolutionary I think the fiasco of the the presidential elections of last year I think that will be a part of that episode of a setback. Uh, and here again, I think so. We have to look at it into kind of a more into a kind of an epi uh, like more episodically, and as a stream of uh, events taking place in a certain time, uh, uh, which uh, where forces of democracy are pushing back uh, uh, in the competition their authoritarian uh, uh, rivals. Uh, uh, yeah, whether they can success uh, uh, be successful in twenty twenty eight. Uh, we will see. I mean, this is uh, is still difficult. So this is so this is difficult uh, because of the conditions of Turkey, because of the the the, the uh, what uh, uh, what the AKP and Erdogan uh, might do against it. So this is, I think, a major issue. 
Uh, but I think it is certainly an important as for the history of the CHP. This is certainly uh, it goes into their history book. So if you look into that from that perspective, for that uh, for the, that this is that they received, they become the uh, the strongest party. Despite such a kind of a, a reset of the party leadership, this is, of course, the kind of a, a story of legends if you look at it from that perspective. But the, the history of Turkey is, is broader than that, and, and we will see. Yeah, and that merits a whole other discussion, which we can continue probably for one or two more hours. Um, but indeed, very, very, very interesting and a very big win for CHP. I think the first... Since uh, 1977, I saw, uh, if I remember the, the numbers correctly. Uh, so yeah, with that, I think we have come to the end of our webinar. So yeah, I want to thank you a lot, a lot Alp, for all this information, for all the interesting insights on Tur Turkish politics. As I said, I think we could have go on, gone on, go on for another hour. I have a lot of questions still in my head, but I think, yeah, we should do another discussion sometime or, uh, of course... Uh, uh, always welcome uh, to join us here in the office. It's not uh, not too far. Um, yeah. And also for the audience, thanks a lot for joining, uh, for joining the Q and A, for all the good questions. Uh, has been uh, has been uh, has been uh, has been great. Um, and of course, also your book Alp uh, is also something to still uh, um, uh, say in one more time. So a lot of things I think we discuss are also in your book. And we will put in the thumbnail of this uh, this live stream a lot of information and also a discount code, which you can get 30% off, right? Oh, yes. I think 30% yes. off. Okay. So, uh, the end of April. So. End of April. So, yeah, thanks a lot uh, all for everything. That was great. Thank you, Emil. And thank you for everyone from, uh, for logging in and asking questions. Thank you. Definitely. And uh, if people uh, want to uh, want to follow us for more events, uh, for, for other webinars, uh, feel free to follow us uh, do, uh, with the socials. They're also in the thumbnail as well in the description below. And yeah, without uh, further ado, uh, I want to uh, wish you a nice evening and until the next one.